Welcome, it's so great to be back with you. Today we're going to explore and create a beautiful wild poppy the easy way. I think you're absolutely gonna love it. We're going to learn some beautiful ombre coloring techniques with this. We're going to add some stunning flower centers and then explore how to put this on a card using background papers. So I'm just gonna have you take a look at some of the beautiful dimensional poppies so we can get started with that and then we'll go from there. So here's just some beautiful ways that you can create the poppy. Today we're doing a similar poppy to this one with similar flower centers. So if you have the wild poppy, you know this one is just such a stunning flower to create with. As you're joining me, let me know where you're watching from. Introduce yourselves if you and I have not met. My name is Emily with Heartfelt Creations and I absolutely love being able to show you some beautiful ways to really uh, maximize your creativity with your three-dimensional flowers. And some of these may look kind of complex or complicated, but when you break it down and you follow these simple steps, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made this. So I cannot wait for you to uh, experience the joy of creating with it. So we'll take one more look at these. Um, and with these poppies, you can do so many different variations of color combinations and even shaping them. You can put them on foam. You can do so many beautiful uh, textures, glitters, all that fun stuff. So give me a shout out if you have the poppy. Um, just a heads up, if you do not have this one yet, I know that we are super, super low on the dyes. Um, so I would highly recommend that you um, jump on this one um, so that you don't miss out on it. Um, and just make sure that you do have that if you have been kind of on the fence about getting this one. Another beautiful way to really utilize that. So to get started, we are going to be using the Wild Poppy um, stamp and die set. Um, this comes with four different sizes of the poppy. Um, and this really gives you a great combination of different sizes you can choose from. You can really layer them different ways. Today, I am using um, this size right here. So that's just the one I chose today. And we are going to layer that on a beautiful card. So we're just gonna get started creating a flower like this. So as you can see, it's a little bit darker red. Um, we're gonna do a combination of, of uh, colors in the background. And then I'm gonna do just a quick little flick with my marker over here that I think you'll absolutely love. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out coloring a little bit of the Monarch Orange. And we're going to get some of that color in. I stamped this with a black ink on our Lux cardstock. If you don't have the cardstock yet, you are missing out. I absolutely love the Lux cardstock for flower shaping. It's very durable, it's very strong, and when you wet it, once it's dry, um, it really holds its shape very beautifully. Plus, I also love it for my card bases too. Um, so with this, we're also gonna go right around the edge and we're gonna do some red geranium. So I did the Monarch Orange around the center. Now, there's so many beautiful color combinations that you can do with a poppy. Um, now, isn't it crazy that we are already on the first day of June? How did we get to month six already? I can't believe it, it's crazy. Um, but here in Indiana, um, one of our flowers that really comes up quickly um, and is a beautiful floral is our poppy. If you are in an area that can grow poppies, tell me what you love about them. Um, recently, we were in an area where we were biking along a trail and I these beautiful poppies, um, we're right alongside the trail, and I just stopped and looked at them for a while because they were so, so gorgeous. Um, and speaking of poppies, you know, you can do them on foam, paper, but they're also kind of a translucent flower. So if you wanted to do them on vellum, I would highly recommend that as well. So you could totally just do this coloring technique. It looks a little bit different depending on how I turn that in the light. Um, but if you want to do kind of a quick, like, flick of your marker um, without doing much blending, this is the Carmine Red. And what I did is I just laid that down and I just kind of went from the outside in and just kind of added some quick flicks, um, just very fast. I didn't really think much about it. Um, and that gives me kind of a quick little uh, texture in those petals without spending a lot of time like doing a lot of blending and shading. And I hope you can kind of see those extra flicks right there in, the, um, in those petals. The one thing that's really beautiful about the way many of our stamps are designed is the artists create these areas that have more shading. So that really shows you where you can go in and add some darker areas of shading. So I literally just press my marker down and then just pick it right back up. And that just kind of gives it kind of a faded out look. Um, and now it's kind of a flick um, technique and it might feel a little bit awkward the first time you do it yourself. 
Um, so just practice, 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 and just be patient with yourself if you do that. Um, so there you have it. Super pretty, very easy to do. Our next step is going to be running this through the shaping mold. Give us a shout out if you've used the shaping mold. These are a paper crafter's best friend. And during the month of June, I don't know if you noticed this, but we just launched a savings today where you get a free shaping mold with a $50 purchase. That is absolutely fantastic. And I can't wait for you to uh, get those extra molds that you've been wanting. And hey, um, if you have some flowers that you really use a lot, I would highly recommend like looking into those flowers and what you can do is you can just have these molds laying open. So if you have multiples of the same mold, you can just stack those molds full of those flowers and run them through your machines. So um, that's just a little tip. If you are a crafter that does a lot of the same flower, or maybe you have like a flower you really use a lot. So that's just a little tip for you as you're thinking about like, what are some of those crafting essentials that you um, want to stock up on and that you don't want to be without? What's great about these shaping molds is whether you are an advanced crafter or a new beginning crafter, you get those same beautiful shaped flowers every single time, which I absolutely love. And it saves you so much time being able to just bring these out. Just imagine how that would be to have this completely filled up, maybe have multiple molds of the same kind, and you have those beautiful flowers all done at the same time. So we're going to bring these out once those have been um, shaped what you all you need to do is just bring them onto your mat this is just a personal preference you can totally do what you want to but I like to give it just a little bit more dimension by pressing down in the middle um, if you would want to have a little bit more of a card that is less dimensional you can definitely um, not do that part it's totally up to you so you get to choose how much dimension you have with these so then I'll just put my hot glue on offset those petals and then I'll again go back in with my stylus just press down in the middle and that will really help me get that beautiful dimension without squashing those petals. Now our next step you can do so many stunning flower centers from stamens um, to prills and all that fun stuff. So here is one where we, you see that the beautiful black rock candy stamens are stunning in the center of the poppies. Um, but today I'm going to show you a different technique that is just really cute. Um, so we stamp this flower in green. So what you want to do is take your scissors and just kind of cut in a circle. It does not have to be perfect. Um, just cut out that middle plate piece and it gives a very realistic kind of greenish look. Now this step is totally optional. There's lots of different ways that you can make the flower centers. But I just find that if you like to do something artsy and a little bit more unique, this is just a fun way to really customize this uh, poppy and do something fun with it. So you have this little circle and I put that stamp side down on my mat, go in a circular motion um, to kind of create a little cup shape. And then we'll go back and just add a dollop of glue right along the back and flick that away. Once that is done, you'll just pop that right in the center of your poppy. Ta-da! And when I am working, see how pretty that is? Now, you could actually just keep it just like this. Like, that would be really pretty. But I really love the ability to add just a really thin circle of my uh, black prills. Um, so those are called power outage. Um, but what you're going to do is just use your Dries Clear Glue and just draw a very skinny line of that Dries Clear Glue right along that outer edge. And if it gets a little bit like misshaped and so forth, it's okay. Um, you can kind of tweak some of those prills once they have landed on your glue with like a pin or a, another really fine tipped object. Um, so we're just going to go around in a circle. Do you see how pretty that is? Um, and then we'll go back. I just have my, I have a little bulk bag of the power outage prills in front of me today. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle that over the top. Now, as you're watching, tell me what you love about this technique. Have you tried it? Um, and tell me what you love about it. Um, and hopefully this inspires you to pull out your wild poppy. Um, if you are watching and you do not have the wild poppy, we'll add the links in the comments. Um, or if you don't see the links, just let us know. We'll give you a link for quick and easy shopping. Um, just a heads up, we are super, super low of the wild poppy dye. Um, and just a, a reminder that um, as a thank you for shopping with us, you get to choose a free shaping mold with a $50 purchase. These are valued at 30 bucks, so that's an incredible value for you. Um, so with this poppy, now it's like, okay, what do I want to do? 
I really wanted to show you a very simple way that you could create a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card using the poppy paper. This paper is absolutely gorgeous. It's hard to pick a favorite, but like, I have to say this one feels like my favorite. Um, it is a paper collection filled with blush oranges, corals, pops of red. It has some blacks, beautiful greens. If you have this paper collection, like you know how pretty it is. It has beautiful shades and textures like this all throughout the entire paper collection. So here we have our card base. Now this paper, or this specific a sheet, I, what I wanted to show you, I'm gonna open the paper pad so you can see this, because I think this is super important, because I do hear the comment quite a bit that crafters struggle um, cutting into the paper collection. One of the things I, I have told our crafters, if, if you struggle cutting into them just because they're so pretty, uh, sometimes it helps just having an extra paper pad because you know that you, you still have something to fall back to um, if you make a mistake on one. Uh, plus, you use these so much, which makes that you have plenty for yourself. Um, so this is the sheet that I chose. Now, if you look, this pattern is the same all the way around. So you could get four or more cards out of this sheet because you're using the four and a quarter by five and a half inch size. So you could utilize every single corner um, for a card like this. So that is one way that you can cut these apart. So there's lots of variations on based on what you can do with those. So my next step, I wanted to just really create a very simple bouquet. Um, so within the Poppy collection, there are these fillers in the background that are super easy to miss. Um, if you are like me and you get excited about more like the focal dimensional flowers. So let's take a look at some of these background florals. So this one's the Wild Poppy bouquet. When you look at this, this has the leaves, it has that pot that anchors it, and then it has this other image that is super beautiful when you just like color it, use it as backgrounds and as a filler for bouquets. So that's what I'm using. Now I stamped the image, we colored it. I added some of the uh, glossy accents or crystal lacquer over the top to make it shiny. But we cut away the poppy that was on there and we're going to add the dimensional one to the top of it to give it more of a 3D. Um, so you can really do um, whatever works best for you. And just a reminder too, as I'm putting these foam dots on, we had ran out of the uh, tabbed foam dots and we weren't sure if we were gonna be able to get them back in because there were some manufacturing issues with it. But the good news is they are back in stock. We are so excited. So if you saw that they were out of stock, that is an item that is back in. So when you're placing your orders, um, it's a great time to stock up on those. So with this, you have this beautiful poppy. You can go ahead and just glue that on top and you have a card. Um, and then you can add your glitters, all sorts of beautiful, fun um, backgrounds with this. Did you want me to, want to see me add the glitter? Well, add a sentiment, and then if you want to see the glitter, I'll add some of that in the background, just show you how I add some glittery touches to my papers. So I chose this Have a Wonderful Day. If you don't know which set this comes from and you're, you want it, let us know in the comments. This comes from a set of three beautiful sentiments that I absolutely love. All I did with this one is I stamped it with the red geranium and carnation red. I layered it on three pieces of cardstock. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to customize this sentiment so it fits on this card. So we're gonna just trim away the uh, leafy accents that have a rose on it. And we'll lay those aside. We can use those on a different project on a different day. Um, so with this, this is a great way to really make an iconic focal sentiment with a card like this. And it just really adds that pizzazz um, that you're looking for very quickly, easily, and beautifully. So with this, there is, I put a layer of crystal lock over the top and then just sprinkle some crystal glitter. Now the beauty of this is if you cut these apart, you can customize this sentiment and really have it exactly where you want it. So with this one, we have this card. It's like, okay, this would be pretty anchored over that base, wouldn't it? I just love this technique and concept. Or you could also always, you know, depending on where that's centered on your card, if I would have layered it a little bit further that way, you could have brought it a little bit further up. But we're going to do it this way. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to layer down our wonderful first. And then we're going to go back and we're going to add our other um, words once we kind of know where we want to have this one. So we'll just add that one to the top. Like how pretty is that? Okay, and then we'll go back, add day at the bottom. 
I just love, I, I think I'm addicted to adding these sentiments that are die cut out to my card bases. It just really is so easy to position them exactly where you want them, which I absolutely love. And then you can position this however you want. So I'm just gonna see, I think I want it right in this section, okay? So we'll go ahead, add our uh, hot glue in the back and we have a card in a matter of minutes. So if you're like, you know how sometimes your creative mojo is just stuck, you don't know what to create, stamp a bunch of these sentiments in different color combinations that you know you'll use a lot. Cut them out and then they're just laying there um, for you the next time. Same way with the poppies. Just sit there and make them in different color combinations. You don't have to do the traditional colors. Just really helps to kind of start um, getting that creative mojo going. So there you have, it's just this very simple yet stunning project um, and it's very doable. And then with this, we're also going to go ahead and just show you a quick way um, to add some glitter to your background papers. This is a technique that is absolutely timeless and super elegant. I'm using, <laughs> this jar says mustard, but it is not mustard. This is a, an ultra fine crystal glitter. And it's what I like to use if I want a really fine line of glitter on my background papers. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that I just start out, just make sure the glue is red at the tip. And then you start moving and I just act like I'm tracing the background papers and I move really, really quickly. The number one things that I saw see that uh, crafters will kind of struggle with with this is if they kind of stop and pause to think and just make sure that you just stay moving very quickly. When you do this, it prevents your glue from um, kind of globbing onto the background and gives you just kind of this iridescent glittery uh, background. So even though it looks like I'm tracing, I am not. I am just moving very fast and using that background as Kind of just a guide um, so I don't overthink that part um, and once that glue is dry it will disappear into the background and all you'll see is the sparkly glitter so right now that looks a little bit whitish yet in person um, so that's the basics of creating that simple yet stunning poppy adding it to a card and you have a beautiful card that you can mail and it's super super stunning so hopefully that really like inspires you to get started creating with your wild poppies um, if you don't have the wild poppies yet um, make sure to get those we've added the links right below um, and then we also have that special savings where you qualify for that free shaping mold with a um, $50 purchase so there is another way that what you can do is I believe as long as this die is available, the Creative Essentials with this is gonna be available. And what that does is it gives you this paper pad and these two items, and then you can uh, purchase those. I think you get like a 10% savings, and then you can get the mold, the poppy mold separately. That's a way to do it if you don't have any of these items. So uh, before I go, I did wanna just show you some more different examples that design team members from all around the globe created. Um, which I think are just so pretty and will inspire you to create with yours. So this is the poppy done in blue. Looks completely different. Here's that vase just used as a background filler. Um, so that is really pretty too. Here is that vase just cut out with an oval. So really stunning, just colored if you're a colorist and paired with some of those beautiful poppies. And then here, this was paired with the uh, flower pot that came out with a sweet pea collection, which I think is fabulous. This flower pot, if you don't have it, is an amazing anchor for your projects. Um, so lots of variations. Again, here is the poppy as well. You can do like flower buds. Um, you can do so many different um, styles with these and the foam um, is super, super pretty with the poppy. Here is the poppy on vellum. So if you can do very non-traditional cards with it. So sky's the limit. Like this one's another one. Here's the pop, or here's the, um, these just mixed together. And then you can just really kind of have some fun with that. So actually this one, hang on a second. This one's the sweet pea. So you get a glimpse of the sweet pea. I just noticed this one's the sweet pea that has a different one, which speaking of the sweet pea, later on this month, I'll be back to share some tips and techniques on how you can do some ombre uh, coloring techniques with a sweet pea. So this card jumped out a little bit before it's time. Uh, but anyway, I think this gives you just a great example of how you can create different styles based on what you personally love. So have a great time creating with your wild poppies. If you don't have yours yet, um, get yours. And I can't wait for you to experience the joy of creating with these. Thank you so much for joining us today and for being part of the Heartfelt Creations crafting family. We'll see you next time. Bye.